carpentry, the Japanese hand tools, the two main influences in the work setup. Um, now carpentry in the Japanese style requires a lot of flexibility. Um, you spend quite some time in a shop environment, uh, in a fairly controlled environment, making, preparing parts uh, very fine, very precisely, uh, but with as much speed as possible as well. <laughs> so set up, uh, a flexible setup, usually centered around some form of sawhorses uh, is really key to achieve precision and speed um, in you know, various balance for each project. Uh, also to have already the, the habit of flexibility in the shop using sawhorses, not a, always a permanent bench, uh, gets you really uh, prep for site work where you definitely don't bring a bench to, to a site. You'll have low sawhorses, tall sawhorses, some form of sawhorses, uh, and uh, you have to produce really fine work, really precise and really fast with minimal setup. So um, you, learn, you learn to do that, and I'll show you some examples of that tonight. Um, yeah, those habits actually really paid off once I moved to New York City and I was there for a few years uh, working in all kinds of different spaces, tight spaces often. Um, it was normal to me. <laughs> in fact, when I have too much space, that feels odd. I, I, do, I do enjoy it, but it is, it, I'm less accustomed to that. Um, all right, so... The shop itself, uh, you can see, uh, you can see behind me, is it's pretty simple. It's mostly an open floor space. Uh, even the semi-permanent bench back here is really only on sawhorses. It's a bench. Um, tools that I use most often are close at hand. Uh, other tools are on some simple shelves a little bit further. Uh, you'll be able to see it when I move to that side. Um, I'll pick some tools that I need, have them close by while I'm working on a project, a certain task, then they usually go back on the shelf and I only keep the few tools I'm mostly using close by. Uh, I may set up another bench in front, this bench here, uh, which is pushed to the side for tonight, but usually it would be, um, if in use, in the middle of the room. Um, yeah, the space is, most of the work can be done in a 10 by 10 space. Uh, the space is a little longer, it's more like 16 feet long, uh, but you can do a lot in 10 by 10, especially when using hand tools. Um, all right. Uh, so let's, I'll show you about the low saw horses first. So over here, we have some low saw horses. Um, the height measurement is not so important. Uh, it's a little below my knee. It has to be comfortable to your body. Um, it has to be comfortable so that when cutting, let's say, you could just hold with your foot and then take advantage of the long handle of the Japanese pull saw. Uh, and then cut something like this so that you have to be you know, comfortable, not too high, not too low. Uh, I do use sometimes some lower saw horses, but it's a little bit less common. So I'll stick with you know, what's, what's the, main, the main setups uh, that I use. And also a good height for ripping, especially if you have a long rip to do you'll want to use both hands on the saw. And since typically in Japanese work, we don't use clamps or hold downs or vice, um, your foot is often your clamp. You know? Makes for a very quick, you know, turning of the stock as you turn and work and cut. Um, so that's very handy height. Uh, also a very comfortable height 
to sit on. And you know, for chiseling, let's say, pretty comfortable height. Yeah. Uh, if you have even, uh, if you have some bigger stock, that is also very convenient height. So furniture or carpentry, you could be working on a, let's say on a timber. This is still a good height to work on. Yeah, or cutting or chiseling, oh, same thing. Hmm. Another lovely use of the low saw horses is when making when making shojis. Eventually, you have to install them. And they need usually some fitting. Whether it's a small shoji or a small door, you can have the shoji sit on the flat portion of the sawhorses, have one clamp over here, and then quite often just hold with your foot, hold the sawhorse down with your foot, have a clamp here, and go ahead and and go ahead and just plain fit the screen to the opening. Uh, very, very convenient. Also very easy to carry. You know, these two. Yeah. All right. So, so this is the sawhorses that are probably most widely used in, in my practice um, are the taller sawhorses. Um, the part of the workflow, well, actually, most of the workflow in, employs them, you know, for all the steps from the beginning. They'll be spread far apart. I'll bring in a rough sawn wood and then sort through, uh, and it's a pretty good height to sort at without having to be bent down. Uh, make some marks, do some rough cutting, have another pair of sawhorses where I stack the parts, then either mill them or ask my apprentice to mill them. Um, then the parts come back up, milled, straight, square, and it's also quite a nice height to be marking at you know, for layout, whether pencil or ink, um, very nice height to be working at. Um, if it's a little too low, small stuff, you can add a bench to the, um, to the setup. Uh, but before I show the bench, I'll also show that uh, it's a very nice height to be cutting in this fashion as well. Yeah, if I cut dovetails or more typically box joints, I'll be I'll be working at this height. Cut, cut, cut. And then same height, I can secure the stock with my body and go ahead and chisel there. Also really nice height for chiseling. Yeah, for my height, these fit my body. Also for pairing, something like that. Uh, Sometimes you have parts that are a little too small, you know, let's say. And rather than bring the sawhorses really close together like this, which is one way to do it. Um, another way is to then have a, have a simple bench 
just a plank with a stop that's nailed or screwed in some way. Um, I stop on this end because the Japanese tools, the plane especially, uh, works on a pull, pull stroke. So you need a, a stop just here to the you know, um, If the work requires more steadiness, then you can easily, you can easily steady a pair of sawhorses with just a one by one by 10, one by 12, put a clamp, another clamp, and a third clamp, and then you have a brace, and then this bench won't, won't move. Uh, the lower brace also acts as a really nice height for a shelf. Um, the lower brace also is an alternative height for a bench. Yeah. You could have a piece of furniture here that's quite short, but raise it up so that you could work on the top, plane the top, something like that. So you have this version. It's a really bare bone version. Yeah, it's very light, but only so sturdy. Um, and then there are you know, sturdier versions, more involved to make, but more stable, more heft. As you see, very similar feature. You have a lower stretcher. And just as with the low saw horses, uh, you could have two of the same saw horses uh, in line and rest a shoji or, or a full size door onto the flat area down here. You can see onto the flat area down here. One clamp and then plane away, turn them and then rest the shoji or the door and do work that you need to do on a flat surface. It's uh, really, really handy, whether they are fancy or still really bare bones. And most of the work is done around these in some ways. Um, yeah, putting a plank on top and you have a bench.